Uh, scene one, take one. Scene one, take one, action. Stepping off the screen. Hi, I'm Kevin Dorma. Welcome back to my whiteboard. Today, we're going to look at something a bit different. We will look at the design margin that we will apply to relief calculations, such as the relieving capacity for a pressure safety valve. Now, usually we take the attitude that more is better. A bigger relief system is better than a smaller relief system. But is that always the case? In this example, we will look at the thermal expansion for a small plate frame exchanger. Perhaps we are replacing an existing exchanger with a larger one. Now with our exchanger, we will imagine that the cold side is blocked in and we start the hot side flow. The cold side warms up a little bit, the cold side fluid expands, and since the cold side is blocked in, we could rupture the exchanger. And that's why we put a small PSV on the cold side. This allows a tiny bit of fluid to, bl to bleed out, in this case, to a small sump. Our sump has a small one inch vent to relieve any dissolved gases or steam that could be flashed off. The question to ask is, can our thermal expansion case safely use this sump? Is the one inch vent line big enough for any flashed steam? Or will we overpressure the sump? If we can use the sump, then we have a simple design and a very simple construction scope. If we cannot use the sump, then we have to route our PSV to a flare line. And that means we need to tie into the flare system, the most important piece of safety equipment in a plant, with the plant running. And if something goes wrong during construction, we will have to shut down the plant to fix it. And this is a serious construction risk. So, do we absolutely need to tie our PSV into the flare, or is the existing sump and the one inch vent just fine? That is what we need to answer. Now in this analysis, you can, you can find all of the mathematical details on my blog at kevindorma.ca. We're only going to look at the highlights here. First, the fluid conditions. We have water, and the heat or thermal expansion coefficient of water is 0 0.0009, uh, 1 over Kelvin. The exchanger is rated for 5,400 kilowatts. It has a surface area of 100 square meters. The design heat transfer coefficient is 2.5 kilowatts per meter squared Kelvin. And we're going to assume that our vent line will be sized so that it can take 100 kPa per 100 meters for the hydraulic calculations. So, step one. Let's look at the standard evaluation for thermal expansion according to API 521. Now with 521, the relieving mass flow is equal to the amount of heat times the thermal expansion coefficient divided by the heat capacity. And in our case, in the very simple case, it is customary to use the rated duty for the exchanger when we're doing this calculation. So if we do that, we get a relieving rate of 4,148 kilograms per hour. And this will be the relieving rate for the liquid using the standard analysis method that we use from API 521. So this is the amount of, this is the relieving rate that we need for liquid. Well, that's great. But what about temperature? How much flashing steam could we create? 
Because we need to answer the question, is the vent okay? So what if we're conservative and we assume the worst case temperature for the fluid, 130 degrees. So we have 130 degree water relieving at 4,148 kilograms per hour. How much steam does that produce? So grab your steam tables, get the enthalpy of water at 130 degrees and the water of water and the enthalpy of water and steam at 100 kPa absolute or 100 degrees Celsius. We'll find that about 5 or 6 percent of the liquid flashes to steam, and this means the steam flow is 234 kilograms per hour. And I'll put it on the same graph of mass flow, and I've now decided that the x-axis is going to be temperature. So at 130 degree relieving temperature, we'll have 234 kilograms per hour of steam. Now, with our design criteria for hydraulics being 100 kPa per 100 meters, this means we need an inch and a half vent line. Our existing one inch line is too small. Now this is where we need to step back and say, hold on, take a minute. This would require us to tie our PSV into the flare line with the construction risks associated with it. Now, is it possible to have the full relieving rate of over 4,000 kilograms an hour simultaneous with the highest temperature of 130 degrees Celsius? And the answer to that question is no. We'll look at that later. We need to look at this a little more carefully. So instead, let's approach this as a heat transfer problem. Now, as a heat transfer problem, Q is equal to U A T hot minus T cold. And in this case, well, we know what the heat transfer coefficient is. It's 2.5 kilowatts per meter squared Kelvin, 100 square meters for the area. The hot side is at 130 Celsius. And we'll let the cold side vary from 0 degrees up to 130 degrees. And I won't do the math here. We'll just do the, check out my website, check out my blog, look at the math for the mass, the relieving mass flow. And what we'll find <laughs> is the mass flow of liquid that's relieving at zero Celsius is <laughs> a horribly high value of 25,000 kilograms an hour, which causes me a, a bit of grief, because that's vastly higher than the 4,000 and, and change that we got from the API calculation. But let's just put aside our tendency or our urge to question the wisdom of API. Instead, let's look at the flashing steam. So we'll take this flow rate and the temperature and we'll do the flash calculation, see how much steam we make. And what we get is the steam flow, no, it doesn't quite look like that. It looks more like that. Has a maximum at about 115 Celsius, and the maximum flow rate is 80 kilograms an hour. Well, hey, 80 kilograms an hour is okay. With 80 kilograms an hour going through a one inch line, I am pretty darn close to our design value for the hydraulics, the pressure drop of 100 kPa per 100 meters. So steam, great. Liquid, causing me some concern. Um, so we need to take a look at this in a little more detail. And the issue we need to sort out is our heat transfer coefficient. 
we assumed the heat transfer coefficient is two and a half kilowatts per meter squared K. Is this legitimate? So our U value of two and a half kilowatts per meter squared Kelvin is for the normal liquid flow rate through both sides of the exchanger. But we have no velocity on the cold side in the thermal expansion case. That means we have negligible convection. According to convection, the U value should the inside heat transfer coefficient should be zero. That means our limiting heat transfer coefficient is incorrect. The narrow plate spacing, and it turns out this exchanger has a plate spacing of eight millimeters, means that we also have negligible thermal or negligible natural convection or buoyancy. So what is the dominant heat transfer mechanism? Turns out this is a conduction problem. And the inside heat transfer coefficient for our conduction problem is the thermal, thermal conductivity of the fluid divided by one half the plate spacing. And for water with a plate spacing of eight millimeters, we get about 0 0.17 kilowatts per meter squared Kelvin. And that is a whole lot lower than 2,500 kilowatts or, or 2.5 kilowatts per meter squared Kelvin. We can consider this to be a realistic heat transfer coefficient with no design margin. So now, over the full range of temperatures, our liquid relieving flow rate looks something like this. At zero Celsius on the cold side, we should have about 1500 kilograms per hour of liquid relief. And as far as the vapor side goes, it will be five kilograms an hour. And at five kilograms an hour of flashing steam, that vent only needs to be a half inch line. And that means our one inch vent is more than adequate for this job. So let's recap. With our simple analysis using the rated design duty for the exchanger, we needed 4148 kilograms per hour of liquid and a really high mass flow of 234 kilos an hour for steam, and that needed a one and a half inch vent, which means a tie into the flare and risky construction. We take a better approximation. Yeah, we end up saying we need 25,000 kilos an hour of liquid, but we know that's wrong. And it says that we only need 80 kilos an hour of steam. And that means that one inch vent is fine. And our most accurate analysis with no design margin says about 1,500 kilos an hour of liquid relief and five kilos an hour of steam. Now the simple method is okay for the liquid flow and it's probably quite conservative. Looks like it's conservative by about a factor of three maybe, maybe more. But the calculated steam flow is not legitimate. And this is because we cannot get the calculated liquid load of 4,000 kilo kilos an hour simultaneous with the maximum temperature or maximum amount of flashing. Using the design value, using the design U value, 2.5 kilowatts per meter squared K, shows us very clearly that 80 kilos an hour is much more reasonable for the steam flow. And even that shows us that there's no way on God's green earth that the heat transfer coefficient can be that high, and even this mass flow rate can be that high. Our reasonable calculation with a reasonable heat transfer coefficient tells us 
the relieving rate should be closer to 5. So that means 80 is more than adequate. And this means we can very safely use the sump as the destination for our PSV and be very confident that the one inch vent is just fine. Let's use a reasonable amount of design margin with our designs and avoid unnecessary complexity with construction or operation. Take care. Bye for now.